Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're, we're looking at a subject that is paramount to your walking consistently in a high Christian life. It's, this is the way God meant this thing to be. The book of Acts is normal Christianity. That's normal Christianity where signs and wonders and miracles follow. Follow them. It says in Acts chapter 2 that, that God um, testified. Of, it's talking about Jesus. God testified of his ministry by signs, wonders. The only testimony of God that a ministry is correct is signs, wonders, and miracles. Over in Hebrews chapter 2, it says the apostles, and it says God testified of them both by signs, wonders, miracles, and then it adds and gifts of the Spirit according to his own will. So that's a testimony of God that we're walking this thing out. I, because I was been born again since 1966, so I sometimes tend to think that people... Uh, have have the training have have come from where and and the Lord's kind of pulled me up short on that and said no that's not necessarily true because things change and uh, and what the emphasis of the Holy Spirit is different in different different uh, ages different time eras. Here's one of the 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 most important things you'll ever learn and you think you know it. But please, please open up to the possibility that maybe there's a lot more to it than what you, what you already know. And that is the word of righteousness. And uh, so, so we've, we, we've come down to, well, righteousness is right standing. Well, I, I, righteousness is in the Bible. Righteousness, righteous, and righteously is in the Bible over 600 times. 600 times. And a lot of that won't fit with right standing. For instance, God is righteous. Who does God need right standing with? You know, he, he's God. He's, yeah, he's doing all right. So, so now, now, now I do agree righteousness gives you right standing. That's what it does more than that's what it is. You know, and say, well, 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 gasoline is that that runs your car. Well, it does do that, but that's not what gasoline did. That doesn't describe gasoline, you know. Um, so, so righteousness gives you. It's, it's what makes available to you. But it's far more than that. And so we're, we're looking at this. So we, we started off here, but I want you to go back over there to Hebrews um, chapter 5, and we're going to pick up. You know, in fact, it's on your paper there on one of those papers that I gave you, but you can look it up, whatever. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5. And um, so, you know, we can read this if uh, anybody that forgot your Bible, you could still. <laughs> yeah, you could still read this. So. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, by this time you ought to be teachers. By now you ought to be discipling someone else. I, I want to tell you something about God. God does not leave places vacant. God does not do that. God's more than enough always. He, he doesn't just feed uh, 5,000, there's 12 baskets left over. God, God's, that's God. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running. So that's, that's a, so if you want God to take you to the next place in your, in your walk with God, disciple someone to take your place. That's right, amen. Be a, always be under someone else and always have someone else under you. That's God's plan for your life. You can say, well, I'm just in the second grade. Well, find a first grader, praise God, and tell them something that they don't know. And always be, always be going forward. If you, if you want God to do something extra in your life besides and take you to a level you've not been, then always be training somebody. Find somebody that you can pour into. And uh, you'll be surprised 
they'll think you know a lot and you're only a half a step ahead of them. And if you keep your mouth shut, they'll think you're really great. So, so, um, so Hebrews chapter 5, by this time you ought to be teachers. But you're not, you have need again to someone teach you about elementary school. You have someone, someone to teach you again the elementary principles of the oracles or the, or the foundations of God. You've come to need milk and not solid food. Everyone, now look at this, verse 13. Everyone who partakes only of milk it's because they're not accustomed, they don't understand the word of righteousness. Amen. Righteousness is the foundation for the kingdom of God. Amen. You remember Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. righteousness. You'll never operate in the kingdom of God in any consistent basis without having an a, a understanding of righteousness and having it operate in your life. Amen. Um, now, there are three areas of righteousness. There's areas of uh, righteousness for your spirit. There's areas of righteousness for your soul or your mind. There's areas of righteousness for your body. So righteousness for your spirit is described in Hebrews chapter 12, said, you've come unto Mount Zion, city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem, uh, innumerable company of angels, and unto the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Righteousness in your spirit is perfection. Hallelujah. It's what God did. You are perfectly redeemed. You are perfectly justified. You are perfectly sanctified. You are perfectly in Christ Jesus. You are per your spirit in your spirit. You are you have become the righteousness of God Himself. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. So that's that's in your spirit. In your soul area, righteousness is having the mind of Christ. It's it's having this mind. It's having it's having. We're going to look at a little more uh, on down the line. But but righteous a righteous conscience, uh, having having this understanding, having this type of a of a uh, thought process, the way you look at things, your world view, the way you operate and things through righteousness. When you when your mind is renewed to that place. A, a place to get your mind renewed in righteousness is uh, Philippians 4, 8. Whatever's holy, whatever's good, whatever's virtuous, whatever's praiseworthy, if there's be any virtue, if there, think on these things. And, and, and you've got that in your papers on down here someplace. But, but that is soul righteousness. Amen. Soul righteousness is Philippians 4, 8. That's soul righteousness. That's, that's your intellect, your reasoning faculty um, and understanding that. Uh, body righteousness is being a doer of the word, not a hearer only. That's righteousness for your body. Body righteousness, be, the works that I do shall you do. And greater works than these shall you do. That's, that's righteousness. You, your body does it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, and so, so, so righteousness, there are three areas of righteousness that unless you learn how to operate in these areas, you'll never under, you, uh, operate in the kingdom of God to any great degree. Oh, you get in there here and there because God loves people and, and he wants to help people you get around. He wants to, but, but I'm talking be, about being able to operate in it like Jesus did. So in um, Romans 14, 17 says this, for the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy So the kingdom of God is righteousness. That's what the kingdom is. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a spiritual force and power that invades from the kingdom of, of God into the kingdom of darkness and translates, transfers, moves things around. 
So, so uh, Colossians 1.13 says, you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. That's the kingdom of God's dear son invades the kingdom of darkness and changes things, bring darkness to light, brings, brings sickness to healing, brings, brings a despondency into joy. Yes. That's the king. So, and that operates by righteousness. So the kingdom of God is righteousness. It is peace. It is joy. So righteousness is a lot more than right standing. Now it gives you right standing, but it is foundational to the kingdom. It is foundational to coming out of elementary school. How many of y'all are ready to come out of elementary school? Well, it's foundational to that. And so we just read that there in Hebrews chapter 5, that, that it's, uh, as long as you're in elementary school, the reason is because you do not understand the word, the, the, the rhema of righteousness. Righteousness is when God speaks to you by his spirit and you respond to that because you know in whom you have believed. You understand your rights and your privileges and your ability that you have because of righteousness. Righteousness brought you from the place where you couldn't do it into the place where you can do all things through Christ. Righteousness is that ability. Righteousness is not based upon your ability to do it. Your good or anything else. It is based upon what Jesus did. So in Romans 5, it said, by one man's um, sin, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. By one man's obedience, many are made righteous. So you're made righteous. You were made righteous. You, you, you don't get righteous because you do it, but because you're made righteous, you do it. You, you operate in that. You, you walk this. It's a way of life for Christian, uh, Christianity to prosper the kingdom of God. Yes. It is righteousness. Yes. Without righteousness, you'll never, you'll never go very far. You, you'll be talking about it, not able to. Not, and you can even believe it, but not able to operate in the power and the ability of it in your own life. Yes. And you'll always be, you know, used to be a, a phrase, um, being a jack of all trades and master of none, you know, and I feel like today there's a lot of Christians, they're jack of all scriptures and a master of none. They, they, they hadn't mastered it. They hadn't gotten a hold of this thing. So basic to it all is righteousness. It is so, it is so imperative that you understand to get out of elementary school, you have to pass the GED of righteousness, <laughs> praise God. You've got to be able to pass the test and go, to go on in this thing. So righteousness is key to understanding. Righteousness is, is, is such a broad area. And what I told you a while ago, righteousness is mentioned over 600 times. Righteous, righteousness, and righteously mentioned over 600 times in the Bible. It is very, very important. It's mentioned 61 times in the, in the, uh, in the book of Romans alone. 61 times righteousness or righteously or righteous is mentioned. And so it's foundational. The book of Romans is foundational to you understanding what happened to you when you come to Christ. That, uh, that old things pass away and these things become new. And, and so it explains the first seven chapters of Romans. explains to you that sin lost its power over you. Two things happened. You died to sin and sin died to you. And if you, unless you understand, you died to sin, so now you no longer want to sin. You may sin, but you'll feel bad about it afterwards. Why? Because you've got a new nature. Old things pass away. And sin, Dale, has died to you. Sin no longer has dominion over you. Sin no longer is your master, it talks about in the sixth chapter. Sin no longer. Sin cannot tell you that when you sin, that it is your master and it separates you from God. It has lost that power. Jesus paid it all. It cannot separate you from God. It cannot cause you to be to be less than anything you was before. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and sin on purpose because you can't walk in your righteousness if you're doing that. But sin has lost its ability to rule your life. 
no longer has that ability. You've got a new master. His name is Jesus, praise God, and he paid it all, praise God. Hallelujah. Now you're free. And so, and then starting in Romans chapter 8, then it comes over on the other side. So what I want to uh, hit on tonight is this. There are two sides to this thing. There are two sides. There are, there's up to and including the cross, and then there's from the cross to the throne. And there are two sides, and the Bible over and over and over will will talk about these two sides. It'll talk about the two the two aspects of Christianity. So one of them is you coming up to the cross, including the cross, and the other one is beyond the cross. There, it's it's going to the throne. Um, Ephesians two six says we are seated together with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So uh, listen. Oh, bless God. Listen, I'm so thankful for what Jesus did. How many of y'all? Man, I'm so thankful for it. But, but listen, if you spend much time around the cross, if you spend, listen, you, you need to be so thankful for the cross. You, but you need to go beyond. Righteousness is going beyond the cross and living this thing out. It's coming to the place to where, yes, I'm thankful. I was a sinner, but it's coming on this side of the cross. Now I'm a saint. Yeah, I did, oh God, it's coming on uh, on this side of the cross. It's all paid for. And, it's, and, it's under, and unless you come to the place where you live this way, it's a way you thank you. Um, we call it a righteous consciousness. You need a consciousness of the righteousness of God that you are and what that's done in your life. You need to think on whatever's holy, pure, righteous instead of thinking on how much a failure you was and how, listen, it's great to, to have a, yeah, I came from there, but I'm not there. I'm here, praise God. Uh, I hadn't reached there, but I'm not where I was, praise God. I'm someplace on a journey and I'm headed someplace, praise God. And God has changed my life. God has given me something I never had before. God has uh, allowed me to do things I never could do it before. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so there's up to the cross. There, there is that. But we, the body of Christ, have majored on the cross and before the cross. And we're going to have to start majoring on after the cross on who we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus himself. We are more than conquerors. We're the head, not the tail. We can do all that. We're going to have to start majoring on, on this side of the cross. Thank God for the cross. But beloved, listen, we're the church of the living God. The answer to every problem in this world is in the church someplace. It's in the church. The wisdom of God knows how to do everything. The wisdom of God knows what to do about coronavirus. And the wisdom of God is given to the church of the Lord Jesus. But unless we get on this side and search out the wisdom of God, we search it out. It doesn't just fall on you. You have to search it out. You have to, it's given unto, unto kings to hide a matter, and it's given unto the people to search it out, praise God. And we can know it. We can know it. We're the body of Christ. We're, the, we're his body as he is. So are we in this world. Every answer to every problem is in the church, praise God. And so... Come into that place where we understand we're on this side of the cross. Yes. Yeah, I'm thankful for the cross, but don't live at the cross. Right. Don't live at the cross, praise God. Start for the throne, praise God. Yes. Live in your heavenly, uh, uh, heavenly abode in Christ Jesus. You, you're, the walking, you're the walking house of God. Hallelujah. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, yes. which you have of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You're the walking house, the portable tabernacle of God himself. Wherever you go, God goes. You might as well not pray, God, would you come? It's impossible. If you're there, he's there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to have this righteous conscience. 
And I, I understand. Well, people say, well, you're, you know, you're just full of pride. Well, I am. I'm proud of God. <laughs> I'm proud of what God's done in my life and made me. Without him, I couldn't do anything, be anything. But I'm not without him. He'll never leave me nor forsake me, praise God. And me and him's going to accomplish something while we're on this earth. Bless God. Hallelujah. So a righteous consciousness, getting a consciousness, getting rid of a sin consciousness. Most of the body of Christ is sin conscious. They are so conscious of sin and they believe sin can do to them what it used to be able to do, but sin lost its power over you, praise God. Hallelujah. Then only if you believe it can, that's the only way it can. You empower it by your faith. But if you won't empower it, if you say, no, bless God, I'm, the, I'm God's way of doing this thing, then it loses its power, and you can walk in the power of the Spirit of God. You can walk in the power. So, so we're looking at this thing. I'm, Brother Lonnie, God been talking to me this week about, about uh, having people that can pray a righteous prayer. A righteous prayer. How powerful the body of Christ. Amen. Praying a righteous prayer. Amen. A righteous prayer is one based upon the word of God by the spirit of God. Amen. That's a righteous prayer. You get to pray unrighteously. And I'm telling you, things will come out of your mouth that will shock you. You think, where where where'd that come from? How, how did I, I'm telling you, if you, if you get to the place to where the, you're, you have spirit-led prayer, the spirit will lead you. He'll lead you by the word of God, but it's when the word of God comes out of your mouth that it becomes effectual. That's what causes it to be manifest. God said, let there be light. There was light. By the spirit of God. So righteousness is the ability, one of the abilities of righteousness is spirit praying, Amen. spirit praying. Yes. So much of what's going on now, or at least some of it, is fleshly play, praying. F fleshly praying prays according to feelings. I feel about it, how my feelings, how my, my past experiences. But spirit praying goes beyond that. It, it considers not the things that, that hinder and the things, they, but it considers the promise of God. It steps into the promise of God. It receives a promise of God. It gets a promise of God in your heart. With your heart, man believes unto righteousness. And that releases righteousness into the, into the situation or into whatever it is that you need. By, by it entering your heart by the Spirit, Hallelujah. by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah to God. Yes, Thank you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Raise your hands with me. Raise your hands. Say, God, I want to have Spirit praying. I, want to have I, want to, I don't want flesh. I don't want to do it according to my feelings. I don't want it according to the, what it looks like, seems like, what the devil says about it or the religion says about it. God, I want to have spirit praying. I'm going to do spirit praying based on the word, but empowered by the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Spirit praying. I'm a spirit prayer. That's what I am. I'm a spirit prayer, praise God. I, I, I'm invigorated by the spirit of God. He tells me. He tells me, I know, I know things, I know things, because he's here to reveal things to come to me. He, he's on, on the inside, I know somebody, maybe way off over someplace else, is in trouble, and they need help. And I'm praying the word of God by the Spirit of God. Bring them out of that, hallelujah. They're not going to get in that wreck. It ain't going to kill them in the name of Jesus. They'll be raised from the dead. Hallelujah to God. Healed and by spirit praying, praise God. God, the Holy Spirit, has to have somebody speak it into this world or it doesn't do anything. You can't just think it. With the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation, unto saving from the, from the situation, praise God. 
That comes about by righteousness, by understanding righteousness, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Come out of elementary school. We need some high school praying. We need some college praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need people with doctorates in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. No things beyond this world. We've got the, we've got the ability. We have, we have the right to enter into the very throne room of God and come out of the throne room with answers, with power, with ability. We've, we have that right to come boldly into the throne of grace and receive something. But just receiving it, you got to come out and give it. You got to come out and, and cause that thing to manifest, praise God. Somebody needs help. Somebody needs help, praise God. You're the answer to it. Praise God. But you, oh, bless God. You had to know you're righteous. Righteousness gives you the ability to receive everything God has promised. That's righteousness. That's what it does. It gives you, you have the right to it. You're righteous. You're righteous. You're righteous. How many, how many thank God that God, that God is uh, merciful? God is, but, but listen to me. Listen to me. God does not give you everything by mercy. God gives you some things because you're his. God gives you some things because you're family. You, you have a right to something because you're family, praise God. Hallelujah. There's only a certain amount you're going to get by, by grace through faith. And there's a lot more that you're going to get because you understand who you are and God can trust you. Yes. God trusts you with it. God believes that you'll do with it what he tells you to do. Amen. Blessed be God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God gives it to you because you're something. Yes, you're his, praise God. You're his. You're no longer a sinner. But now you're a saint of Almighty God. You're, you're no longer um, un, underneath, but you're above. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You're no longer weak, but you're strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's right. Amen. Blessed be God. You're joint heirs with Christ. Amen. An heir of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's righteous consciousness. Thinking about yourself different. Thinking about yourself different. And I understand that... And but but religion has gotten into this thing, and and well, you don't want to you don't want to say a bunch about yourself. People think you're full of pride. People can think about me whatever they want. After 75 years, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Praise God. I care what God thinks about me. Hallelujah. I I know that people need help. Praise God. And we've got the answer to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I, I know him and I have believed and I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded he's able and wants to give me everything that needs to be manifested in this world. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Well, I go on more there, but I forgot my Bible. Look at the rest of that verse there, Hebrews 5, 14. Solid food is for the mature. Yes. Solid food is for the mature because of practice. They have their senses trained or exercised to tell the difference between good and evil. You have to walk this thing out and learn, teach your soul, the difference between what works and doesn't work. You walk it out. You walk it out. You're not, it's, you're not going to start walking this way and then everything just turns out right. You're going to start walking this way and you're going to teach your own self the difference between walking it out spiritually or walking it out fleshly. And it'll start, your, your soul will start getting the information after a while and putting it in a place that it can, it can recover that information. It can, it's called your memory banks. 
and it'll bring it up and it'll say, no, don't do it that way. You tried it that way once before and it never did work, you know, or three or four times. Do it this way. I remember when we did it this way. And your soul then will line up with your spirit and your spirit and your soul can overcome your body. Your spirit and your soul can tell your body, no, no, and no, you ain't going to do it. No, we gang up on you, You're two against one, and you, we're going to do it this way right. or not do it that way, whatever. And, you, and listen, Christianity does not have to be hard all the rest of your life. Get out of elementary school. Praise God. Get on over here and, and um, uh, where, where, you're, where you're walking this thing out, where you, where you understand it. All right, so goes down through there and uh, mm. well look look there on that on that piece of paper see Isaiah 32 and uh, starting verse 15 until the spirit is poured out upon us from on high oh thank God Amen. that happened on the day of Pentecost when the wilderness becomes a fertile field fertile fields are for, so, so you keep growing from glory to glory Amen. Then justice dwells in the wilderness. And look at this. Righteousness abides in the fertile field. So, so, so if you want to keep reaping something, you want to, so, so you started off in it, but righteousness abides. The word abide means to uh, settle down into as with permanent residence. Amen. Not a place you visit, but it's a place you just, uh, you know, you're there all the time. Righteousness will abide in the fertile field and you'll keep harvesting and harvesting and harvesting and harvesting instead of instead of hitting them dry places to where, you know, you was harvest and then you went through it. No, if you'll stay in righteousness, it'll, start, it'll cause a fertile field. And, and, and uh, when you get done with one harvest, you look over here, and here's another one. Well, how does that happen? Whatever you plant, you will reap. Whatever you sow, be not deceived. God's not. Whatever. So, so if you keep planting righteousness, you will keep harvesting out the field of righteousness. Hallelujah. And, and it'll, go, uh, it'll keep on manifesting. Keep on manifesting. Keep on manifesting. Praise God. God wants to prosper you yeah, in all areas. F yeah. Financial prosperity is the lowest form of prosperity there is. Yeah. But you need, to, you need to be in that. Uh, yeah. Financial prosperity. But I want to tell you something. The principles of the kingdom of God work every time. Yeah. And if it's not working for you, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. It's not God that's doing something wrong. He's... <laughs> You're doing something wrong. You're doing something right. You, you can believe for checks. If you're not tithing, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. And if it does happen, you already owe the whole thing. <laughs> and then need another check, probably. Yeah. It doesn't, it does not, you cannot skip the basics right. and go on to, over into maturity and get the thing, think it's going to, going to work that way. Well, the same way in righteousness. You got to keep on with it. So keep on planning. Keep on seeing yourself as righteous. Keep on seeing yourself as holy. Keep on seeing yourself as justified. Keep on and keep looking into it. Looking into it. You have to just stay in uh, the Word of God by the Spirit of God, Amen. and He'll keep teaching it to you. So then the next verse says, "And the work of righteousness." Now righteousness lives. It's a life. Righteousness is not just something. You, righteousness lives. It's a life, and it produces. There's a product of righteousness. So it says, so the work of righteousness is peace, and the effect it'll have is quietness and assurance forever. Yep. I don't know. You might want to shut the door over there. <laughs> The work of righteousness is peace. Yes. If you lack peace, you're not living in righteousness. Amen. Amen. And the effect it'll have is quietness. Amen. In the middle of COVID-19 or 46 or whatever is going on. Amen. Quietness and assurance. You, 
You don't have to talk yourself into believing it. You just believe it. You don't have to talk yourself into, into being, you just are. Righteousness is a force that will cause itself to, to manifest in your life and you won't, you won't have to try to make yourself be in peace and make yourself be. No, the effect of righteousness is peace. And what it produces is quiet assurance. I know. I know. It might not look like it, but I know. It might not seem like it, but I know. Even other people might not believe it, but I know. Assurance. I'm sure about it. I'm sure that I know him. I'm sure that his power is available to me. I'm sure that I've been raised up and seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ. When it doesn't seem like no demons uh, uh, giving way, not backing up. Quite, uh, uh, righteousness is a ability. It's a life. It lives. And righteousness causes you to come to the place of quietness, assurance, and peace. Does something inside of you. Power of righteousness. Jesus is the righteousness of God, and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. You're, you are that. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if, so if, you, if you're having trouble with peace, if you're having trouble with quietness and you're having a trouble with assurance, you need to study out, pray over, and meditate on righteousness because it'll do something to you. Amen. you. You won't be changing you. It'll change you. The Word of God will change you. Amen. Word of God causes itself to, it's alive. The Word became flesh dwelled among us and the word will become flesh in your life praise God and overcome it. And, and people think you're really something but it's the word of God but it's you but it's him but you're not sure where you leave off and he's saying it don't matter anymore because you're united with him in Christ praise God Amen. righteousness has that ability bless God Hallelujah. quit trying to be it and receive it and yes, get in there. Admit it if you don't have it working. That's right. Are y'all still awake? Yeah, Bless yeah. God. Big deal, man. Everybody's got, there's something everybody's got not working. Amen. Nobody got the whole thing working. True, quit, quit doing this thing. I, I got I to gotta confess it's working even if it's not working. No, there's, listen, if you don't have it working, say it ain't working in my life, but I know where the answer is, praise God. Now, I'm going to get in there and, and, and get into uh, the reality of that thing, and I'm going to spend time on over there in the spirit realm, and it'll change you, praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's all right that you don't know everything. We already got that figured out. Hallelujah. Right, Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This false Christianity that has to, well, I know that, I know that. No, you know it in your head. It ain't working for you, though, because I talk to you. Praise God. Right. <laughs> and, and it's not, it's, but that's okay. It's not working. It's all right. It's not, it's all right. There's a way to get it, praise God. So start on over there and get it. But, but, but stop this stuff about because you know what the Bible says, then, then it's, it's so for me. I don't, listen, you have a legal right to it, but just because you know that the Scripture said that, this, you can know the Scripture says by you that, that, that um, uh, all who believe in him are saved, but I don't get you saved. Just because you know you got to get saved, praise God. You got to receive it. Just because you know a Scripture says it. Now, thank God you know what Scripture says. It. Go after it, praise God. Go after it. You have a legal, righteousness gives you a legal right to obtain it, but you got to go after it, praise God. You got to meditate on it day and night. You got to get in there and find out what Scripture, you got to get the Holy Spirit to, not only to tell you what it means, but, but start imparting something into you. Change you, praise God. Yeah. Something will come up out of your spirit and it'll change you. Yes, 
into, into whatever it is he says. Word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two of joy. It, it divides a soul from spirit. And it's a discerner of the thoughts from the intentions of the, you can have good intentions, but I'm telling you that you, you've got to get the living word of God on the thing uh, uh, operating in your life. Your neighbors are waiting for you to start walking this thing out. Amen. All the creation groans and travails waiting for a manifestation of the sons of God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You can do it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and say, you can do it. Can do it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Word to work for you. Spirit of God uh, on the inside of you, the spirit of God is for you. It don't matter who's against you. Spirit of God's for you, praise God. Amen. Word of God is given unto you. Yes, All these promises of God, but just because you know the promises. So many Christians I see, and they, and they say these things. They, you know, oh, beloved, righteousness lives. And you live in him and he lives in you. Hallelujah. 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 Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You can come to the place where you're living by the faith of the Son of God. You've gone beyond your faith. You've gone on up there to an area, praise God, where you, where, where the eye hasn't seen or ear heard, neither then in the heart of man things God's prepared for them that love him. But we have received them by the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. There are, this is foundational. There are deep things. We've got to get into the deep things of God in the church. We're the answer of God to this world. Yeah. You, you can pray from now on, God, would you do this? God, would you do that? No, you do it. Yeah. God, would you come, come against the mountain of COVID? No, I told you to speak yeah. to the mountain, and I said the mountain will obey you. you we've got to do it. We're the answer, praise God. Now by him, I understand that. Yeah, it's by him, but, but the church, praise God, is the, it's the body of Christ. He's the head, but we're the body, praise God. We've got to come to the place where we're no longer in elementary school. Listen, there's worse things coming than what's happening now. As we, listen, if we can't, if you, if we can't run, uh, walk with the horsemen, what are we going to do about running with the horses? Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But we can do that. We can do it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's doable. It it's doable. Get started. You got to start now. Do you got to start now. Praise God. We're the church. Yeah. We're the church. Praise God. The awe of God is here. God's awesomeness, God's awesomeness. It's on the inside of people. On the, the glory of God lives on the inside of you. You've been raised from the dead by the glory of God just like Jesus was. And the glory is on the inside of us. But learning how to walk in the high school, learning how to walk in uh, over there in, in the higher uh, realms of God. Listen, I'm telling you, praise God. There's a place where the power of God flowing out of us will affect people coming down the street, praise God. They'll pull over and say, what's in that building? What's there? We're the body. We're the, we're the, we're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. And there's a time... They'll come in that door and fall on their face and say, man, God's in this place. How does that happen? By us being the church, praise God. Being this, walking this righteousness out. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. 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 You see, Isaiah 54, in righteousness you're established. In righteousness, you're established. Amen. In righteousness, you put your feet down in it. You, in righteousness is the bedrock. Righteousness is the foundation to this whole thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Without righteousness, you'll never get this work. Yeah, God will love you. God will love you, but, but do you love God? Yes. Do you love people? 
Do you love people enough? To, it's going to cost you something. It'll cost you some people around you. It'll cost you your time. It'll cost you. It's got, do you love people enough to pay the price to get a hold of it? Praise God. And, uh, so you can go out there in the power and the anointing of God and show them Jesus is and in that tomb. He raised. I know he lives because he lives in me and he lives through me. Praise God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to God. Bless the Lord. Do you love more people more than you love you? Do you love others more than you love your, you know what people think about you? Are you willing, are you willing to pay the price? It's going to cost you something. You can't be like everybody else. Cost you something. Cost you something. God let them know. God let them know. Going to cost you something in the middle of the night. Going to cost you something when you want to sleep, when you want to go to bed. But somebody needs you to pray. Somebody needs you to get a hold of something because they're in trouble. Somebody needs you to needs you to believe. Somebody, somebody needs you to come boldly into the throne of grace. Somebody, need, are you willing to pay the price? Walk in this thing past being in elementary school. You go back into elementary school where, where the greatest thing in your day is recess. You know, where you don't, but, but if, you, if you're going to walk this thing out, it'll cost you. It'll cost you the toys of the senses, but you'll get the riches of the spirit in return, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Do you love people or do you love you? You love people or you love your comfort? Do you love people or do you love what, what people around you think of you? You love people. Oh, I love God. You cannot love God without loving people. Can't do it. Can't do it. Whatever you do to the least of these that believe in me, you've done it to me. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hand and say, God, God, I want to love. Give me a love for people right now. God, give me a love for people. Give me a love where I go beyond myself, where I go beyond my comfort zone, where I go beyond what I can get and what can. Lord, Lord, I want to love people. I want to love people like you love me. Oh, God. Oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I'm going to live this thing in power. I'm going to live this thing in victory. I'm going to live this thing in the anointing of, of righteousness. I'm going to live it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to be far from the devil's plans. I'm going to be far from anything the devil can do. I'm not afraid of the devil. He's afraid of me. He, he don't want me to wake up. He, he tries to shut off my alarm clock so I won't get up too early. Hallelujah, because of his fear. Uh, I'm going to walk this thing out. So in Isaiah 54, it says, you will be far from oppression. I can't get depressed. I'm too blessed. <laughs> I'm too blessed, praise God. I, I don't get depressed. I, I don't, you can't oppress, depress, or unpress me, praise God. <laughs> but uh, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Right, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, the blessing of God is the power to change things. The blessing is a power to change things into the way that God made them, wants them to be. When God blesses you. God empowers you to prosper. That's a blessing. Powers you to prosper spirit, soul, and body. That's a blessing of God. Blessing is the power of God. God blesses you. God blesses you. God empowers you. Empowers you, praise God, to prosper. 
empowers you to take whatever, whatever you're walking in now and to prosper it to where you got more than enough for yourself. You can put it on other people. You can bring other people out, praise God. You can bless other people. You can help other people. The, the, the blessing of, of healing is the empowerment to get yourself healed so much that you can get others healed. That's a, that's a blessing, praise God. God blesses you to make you a blessing. That's a, the empowerment, praise God. Ability of God, all that is in righteousness. Understanding this righteousness. You be far from oppression, depression, fear. So it says, um, Isaiah 54, in righteousness, you're established. You be far from oppression because you're not afraid not afraid what the enemy can do, not afraid what the economy is going to do, not afraid what COVID-19 can do. You know, you're far from fear and from terror, for it will not come near you. Oh, God, open their eyes. To you Listen, when you're walking in this like you ought to, that is literal reality. It cannot come near you. It, there's a force field or something Around, but you got to believe it. You, and, and it cannot penetrate that. It cannot get there. There's angels in camp around about you. God goes before you and behind you, praise God. God's for you, no matter who's there. Listen, I'm telling you, it cannot come near you, but you have to activate it by righteousness. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Cannot come near you. Can't come near me. I'll kill it. I'll kill COVID-19, praise God. And COVID-24 or whatever else. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, look in verse 15. If anyone, if anyone assails you, it didn't come from me. So, so COVID-19 did not come from God. Whoever assails you will fall because of you. God said, I created the smith and it flows uh, coals into the fire, brings that away. No weapon, and this is taken so out of context. This is in context of the righteous. In righteousness, you'll be established. If you're established in righteousness, then no weapon formed against you will prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every tongue accuses you. You will condemn. You got to condemn it. You got to condemn it. You have the power of life and death is in your tongue. Whether that thing prospers or not is according to what you say about it. What you're believing in, no, nah, it will not. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Uh, with my tongue, I condemn it. I say no in the name of Jesus. I have more than enough ability and power in Christ. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this, in this COVID junk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. But according to what you say about it, you cannot let people curse you by saying you're going you're to get sick if you do not counteract it. Right. If you don't say no, no, well, they'll take it the wrong way. Let them take it the wrong way. I ain't, I'm not, I'd rather they take it the wrong way than, than me take COVID, praise God. Amen. Amen. Only with your tongue, you will condemn. That's right. That's right. It's up to you. Power of life and death is in your tongue. No. Whatever you bind, whatever you lose, you will condemn. All this is a part of righteousness. And their hell deeds of you and... Um, Go over there. Some of these other, some of these other papers I get, uh, they gave you here. You see on uh, on the first page there it says righteous consciousness is a way of life. Righteousness is a way you live, not something you. Uh, righteousness, the life of righteousness. It's the way you live. You you think this way. You just you operate this way. Amen. And you see there, righteousness removes every obstacle. Every. Righteousness removes every reason. 
Righteousness removes every hindrance that would keep you out of the presence of God and the life of God. Righteousness does that. Righteousness removes it. You'll only think you can't do it if you're not thinking righteousness. If you're thinking sin, if you're thinking condemnation, if you're thinking you don't pray enough, you don't study enough, you don't, it, none of this happens because you do enough. It re- happens because Jesus is enough. Yeah. Praise God. He's enough. He's Hallelujah. Enough. For you and him both. Bless the Lord. Yes. In righteousness. righteousness. So righteousness takes care of every reason that you cannot receive the full benefits of the promises of God. And then it brings you over into an area to where you receive the promises. You receive what God said. Righteousness will make you on the inside, will make you where you're not trembling, where you're not. Righteousness will give you strength where you can come boldly, where you can come, now not arrogantly, but you can come confidently and receive, that belongs to me. That belongs to me. I receive it, praise God. I receive it, blessed be God. It's a promise, praise God. And I come into the promised land. Righteousness gives you the ability to come in and receive you whatever the promise of God is towards you. That's righteousness. Gives you that ability. Hallelujah. Gives you a right to everything in the kingdom of God. Righteousness gives you a right to everything in the kingdom of God. So Ephesians 1, 3, God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. He's already done it, praise God. It's past tense. God has blessed you with that. So gives you absolute right to everything. In the kingdom, if it's in the kingdom, righteousness gives you the right to it. The righteous receive it. The righteous receive it. Listen, the righteous receive it. Why is this so important? Because without a righteous consciousness, you'll be a beggar. You go in. God did not make you a beggar. He made you a believer. Praise God. Not a beggar. Not begging God. Not crying and and boohooing and whatever. God. Now I believe you, God. I believe you, hallelujah. I stand up and I receive it by faith. I believe in you, God. I believe your word. I believe what you've done. I believe who you've made me to be. I'm a believer. I'm not a beggar. I don't beg you to do it. I believe you to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's not looking for beggars. God's looking for believers. Will you be one? Will you be a believer? Can you believe God? God's looking for believers for people that live around you. God's looking for somebody to believe him. God's looking for somebody. The eyes of the Lord search to and fro over the whole earth, searching out somebody that he can show himself strong on their behalf. Will that be you? Will that be you, praise God? Are you a believer? You're saying, here I am, God. Here I am. Quit looking, God. Quit looking. I'm right here. Hallelujah. Show yourself strong, hallelujah, on my behalf. Show the world the strength and the arm of God. Hallelujah. What he's done, what he's he's made this new creation to be. Bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Look in that third one right there, that third. Faith isn't what gives it to you. No, God gives it to you. Faith receives what God gives. Faith doesn't make God give it to you. No, God gives it to you because he's a good God. God gives it to you because he's blessed you already with it. God emptied out his savings account and gave it to you, praise God. Everything he had, hallelujah. Hebrew, uh, Romans 8 says, if he gave you Jesus, why would he withhold something else from you? That's the most precious thing he had. He's given him to you, praise God. Now, so, so faith uh, is not what causes God to give it to you. God's nature is what God, God is a giver. God loves, God is love, love gives. God so loved, he gave his only begotten son. So God's, God's nature is what gives it to you. Faith causes you to receive what God gives to you by grace. Hallelujah. God gives it to you. So by grace are you saved through faith. 
not, not of yourself. It's a gift of God. So faith receives what God already has made available. God already, faith doesn't make God give it to you. No, God, no, God gives it to you because he's God. He likes you. He not only likes you, he loves you. Thinks you're swell, praise God. He thinks he did a good job. God thinks he did a good job when he, when he uh, caused you to be created in Christ Jesus. God thinks he did a perfect, God thinks, he's, uh, God thinks he knows what he's doing, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Yes, Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. You, Lord. Have faith in God. Have faith in God that he's that good. Yes, Have faith in God that he gave it to you yes, and freely uh, he gives it to you and you just receive Faith just receives what God gives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. There's some of y'all here now, right here, you need to receive. You've, you've been praying about something. You've been praying about it over and over and over. Has not seen a manifestation of it. You, if you just simply receive, just use your faith to receive. I believe you gave it to me, God. I believe you already made it available to me. There'll be a manifestation of it before this night is over. Amen. Right here, right now. Raise your hand. God, I receive it. God, I've been believing. But Lord, I receive it. I'm using my faith. To, I'm not using my faith to get you to give it to me. You give it to me by grace. I receive. I'm using my faith to receive. I re Oh, in the name of Jesus, I receive it. I, no matter healing or prosper, whatever it is, trouble. There's some trouble in your life, in your family. And if you just receive right now, that trouble will go away. You receive it in the name of you. You receive peace that passes all understanding. In the name, by faith in God. By faith in God. Just put your faith in God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be God that he's that good to you. He's good to the righteous. God's good to the righteous, hallelujah. God found a way to get it to you because you're righteous. He made you righteous, therefore he could give it to the righteous, hallelujah. He could give it to the sanctified. He could give it to the justified. He can give it, that's you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, quit, quit living before the cross. Live after the cross. Thank God for the cross. But you're not at the cross, praise God. You're at the throne. You're in the throne room, hallelujah. We're in the high places of God. You're no longer in, the, in elementary school. Come on, praise God. Come on up. It's, a, it's time that you come on up here when you ought to be teachers of others, hallelujah. Learn the principles of righteousness. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Receive right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You're going to see a difference before this night is over. In the name of Jesus, in that situation, you say there'll be a difference. You just receive. I receive it. I receive it. I'm, I quit trying to get good enough to get it. I quit trying to have enough faith to get it. I just have faith in God. It's simple, praise God. I just have faith in God that His ability to get it to me is greater than my ability to not get it, praise God. Hallelujah, I receive. Hallelujah, I receive my healing. Right now, I receive my healing, praise God. I receive healing, blessed be God. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus heals me now. I receive healing. I'm not trying to have enough faith to get God to heal me. God already healed me. I have faith in the fact that God's already done it. By his stripes I'm healed, bless the Lord. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. Oh, in the name. In the name. In the name, in the name, may the angels of God encamp round about those that fear him, encamp round about you to bring it to pass. May the angels of God, may the angels of God send forth to minister for those that are heirs of salvation. Oh, blessed be God. Go out and cause it. Go out, go out and gather it together. Hallelujah. Today, right now, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. On your behalf, on your behalf, because you're, you're, you're a child of God. You belong to God. You're in family, praise God. God does not, 
God does not uh, 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 walk away from his family. God does not do that. God is faithful, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. You're going to see an answer. You're going to see a difference, bless God, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. A righteous consciousness. It's so because I'm somebody. It's so because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It's so because old things have passed away and all things become new. And all these things are of God who's reconciled me unto himself through Jesus Christ. It's so because I'm a new creation. I'm a new creator. I'm somebody who never did exist before. I'm new, hallelujah. I'm new every day, every day, every day, praise God. I'm new and I'm renewed in him. And, and though the outward man perish, the inward man's renewed day by day. Hallelujah. That's this day. Oh, in the name of Jesus. I got more than I had. More than I had yesterday. I got more of it today. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last point on that was this. Righteousness, a righteous consciousness will produce the character of Christ in your life. A righteous consciousness will produce the character of Christ in your life. You thinking this way. That's why the devil don't want you thinking this way. That's why religion don't want you thinking this way. That's why a bunch of people call you on the phone don't want you thinking this one. Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants you to think this way. God wants you to think righteousness. God wants you to think righteousness. God wants you to think this way. Hallelujah. 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 I'm hit you with two more things. I'll let you go. Philippians 4, 8 gives you that list. That's a righteous consciousness. And it says, so you think on true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good, virtuous, and praiseworthy things. The Message Bible says, Philippians 4, 8, Meditate on things that are true, noble, authentic, reputable, compelling, gracious. Think the best, not the worst. Think beautiful, not ugly. Think, uh, think on things of praise, not on things of the curse. And I like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 James 5.16 says... The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The Amplified Bible says the heartfelt, continual prayer of somebody in right standing with God makes tremendous power available, yes. dynamic in its working. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Righteous. But if you, if you don't have a righteous consciousness, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Doesn't work just because it's in the Bible. You have to be a doer. You have to be a doer. You have, you have to believe this. You have to, you have to get it in you. There's so much power in the body of Christ. So much power the devil doesn't have a chance against it. But if you don't know your power, you don't know how to release it. Don't know. Don't know what it'll do. If you don't understand that, don't know how to use it. You know, you ever watch on TV and they, they throw a stick of dynamite at something and it blows it up? That's a bunch of baloney. It won't do nothing but, you know. You, you, can, put a, you can put a stick of dynamite on the pavement out there and, and set the thing off and it might take off a little bit of that, you know, the top layer of that thing. <clears throat> but it, uh, power always travels the force of least resistance. And so most of it just go up in the air. If you, but if you dig a hole, put that dynamite on the inside of that hole. Praise God and put a percussion cap on that thing and keep it all from blowing up. Praise God. 
<laughs> you can move a few of the cars out there. Yeah, that's true. You know, let me get mine out there before you do it. <laughs> you have to know how to use it. You have to know how to use righteousness. You have to understand mighty force, power, ability of it is at your disposal. Bible says this, for the word of God is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God instructs you how to plant that dynamite and get the thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. 